So we're getting close to the end of the Halo series, and I am kind of disappointed. I wanted to like the show so much, it had so much potential, but now I'm kind of agreeing with a lot of people where I see this. And the biggest complaints I have, I think, are just this show would unironically do better if it wasn't called Halo. I say this trying to be honest because this show has a lot of potential and it had some interesting plot points. However, the problem is, well, let's start with the first part that I think is the most glaring issue that I think a lot of people have. Halo is a futuristic military science fiction genre shooter. Everything is based in science, everything is supposedly based in logic, and there was never magic or mysticism established, except with the Gravemind, which was more of a zombie. But even zombies can have sometimes been justified in science fiction. The problem is, when we look at Halo compared to Star Wars, in Star Wars, from the first movie, mysticism was established with the Force and Space Wizards. Halo has never really had magic or mysticism to the extent or even to where we are at with the TV show. In the games, everything was based in technology. You flip on a switch, you turn on the artifact. You have this launch codes, you launch a missile. That's really it. You have the activation code, you can activate the Halo ring. This story has focused so much, especially on Quan's storyline with magic and mysticism, that I'm really surprised. Like, of all the things, the biggest detriment to this is the fact that Halo never had mysticism this way in the main books. The writers were very clear in saying they did not play the video games, but I heard that they were looking at the books. The books do not establish mysticism from the ones I've read. I haven't read all of them, but the books I have read, again, focus on science. Whether it's pseudoscience or real science, it doesn't matter. They had some sort of justification for what was happening. The biggest problem is they decided, oh, well, it's ancient technology. We don't know how it works. And that's kind of the problem. If it's technology, you should know how it works or should have an explanation. If you just let it be magical and do things without ever explaining how, it doesn't come across as technology. Like, for example, at the beginning of this entire series, we've been following the story of two, a keystone, and whatever else is with it. That's paired with it. They're called keystones. So, when you think of a keystone, you would normally, like myself, assume this is for opening some sort of door, unlocking a secret, maybe just opening up something, who knows. But, in the first episode, this keystone has John Cheeks, remember memories that were suppressed, they had an EMP go off that restored power to his ship, whilst also crippling the power of the entire planet or at least the military base around him. That's not a keystone. A keystone is like a key, hence keystone. You use a key to open a door, it's not good for much else. This key is more this keystone is more of a multi-tool at best, and at worst a magical bullshit device. Because again, the first time we see it, John picks it up, he touches it, and he starts remembering memories. Okay. And after remembering said memories, it then unleashes an EMP, which turns on his ship, which was already hit with another EMP, but also knocks out electricity from other bases. That's not a keystone. This is a magical bullshit device. And it doesn't have any rules. There's no activation. There's no way of controlling it, apparently. All you do is hold on to it, and it will do things. Again, this is magical bullshit. It's not really looking into this. It's not really anything that works. You can't justify that. There's no way a technology multi-tool like that is just left and called a keystone. But I'm pretty sure the writers are going to find some way to try and justify it. I may not agree with it, but it's better that they try to justify it instead of just rolling with the punches. The next part, and I mentioned this earlier, is Quan's story mostly is the one that focuses on the mysticism on the other side, where her story's mostly filler, and it's bad. 
And I'm saying the character Quan from the writers is bad. The actress Yerin Ha, she's fine. I think she's a good actor. She's doing what she's what she can with the character she was given. And I think that's kind of the problem. She's doing the best she can, but an actor can't save a bad script. A bad script will make or break any story. You can have a fantastic character that everybody will love, but nobody wants to watch a two-hour movie if you only get five minutes of a beloved character. They will clip it and put it into a YouTube highlight section and people will watch that more than the movie. And that's kind of the problem. The writers have done Miss Ha really dirty with this because Quan's story for the most part is she goes somewhere, people die, she tries doing more things, more people die, she screams, she gives up at one point, and then she's given a mystical drug trip to see her ancestors talk to Guilty Spark. Let's not forget, there is a freaking Guilty Spark drone from the well in her vision. That is the first Forerunner robot we've seen. It's Guilty Spark in a magical drug trip. Let, let's not forget that part. But again, this whole thing with Quan is, Quan could have been an interesting character. She could have been used so many different ways. Instead, it's literally, she's screwing up everything around her to the point where so many people have died because of her actions, and she's not taken responsibility for it. I don't think she's taken responsibility or had to come to terms with the fact that her actions are getting people killed in droves. And I don't like this, because this shows any uprising or resistance to a government just means that whatever you do, you're just going to be getting people killed. And I feel that's disingenuous, one, to the character Quan, if the writers were trying to do her justice. But also, it just shows this authoritarian approach as if, sure, we're making the UNSC writing it as corrupt as possible. But we're also going to make the one piece of resistance that we see to the UNSC constantly fail, get people killed, and do nothing? I don't think that's a good way to write this at all. But again, this is just something I picked up on, and I think it's just stupid. If you're going to have a resistance and write a super bad government, don't make the government be in the right. The UNSC in this show basically focuses on, we do everything that we need to for the greater good, and the problem is they show it as not only corrupt, but willing to turn a blind eye to certain things to make sure that they get results. Now, you can argue this happened in the games, and that's fine. The big problem is they've written the UNSC to be on a whole nother level of corruption. And the problem is if the UNSC portrayed as it is was like that, most people would be part of the insurrectionists. If you knew how they were working, how they were treating everybody around them and what their outlook was, again, you would want to join the insurrectionists. You would want to fight against this government. And yet our only outlook into the government and the insurrection is people dying because the covenant just killed them and they can't apparently defend themselves. And the other main figure of resistance is Soren and Quan, and Quan gets everyone around her killed and cannot fight to save her life, which is really not a good message for what you should do to a tyrannical government. If you're under a tyrannical government, you should fight back, in my honest opinion. However, that's how the writers decided to make this. And then we come to my favorite character, which is Bokim Woodbine, who plays Soren. I'm pretty sure I'm agreeing with everybody here that Soren is the best character this entire show, and he's being shafted so hard. Seriously, Soren was my favorite character from the beginning. He made sense, he was badass, but he also was, log for the most part, logical, except for when the writers didn't need him to be. And that's what I liked about it. Not to mention, you know, he's a crippled character. That's actually interesting. Because now you see basically a man with one good arm learning how to fight, fend for himself, and become a pirate who is known for some parts of the galaxy. And he does his job well. If anything, I would want to see a, a series dedicated to Soren. But at the same time, why is Soren the most interesting character? He's the most fleshed out. 
he's the best written. Everybody looks at him and just thinks, no, this guy's fantastic. I love seeing him on screen. But instead, he's dedicated his screen time to mostly protecting Quan, trying to give her a life lesson, and getting beaten only when it's narratively convenient, and then being a badass when he should be. And I'm here for it when he's being a badass, because he's honestly, again, my favorite character from this entire show. He does really well. So, Mr. Woodbine, if you ever find this video, which I doubt you will, honestly, you deserve better. You and Yuri and Ha deserve better as actors, because this show did both of you dirty. And I feel bad for both of you, because I think they're great actors. I really do. But because of that, again, I feel this entire TV series would be better if it wasn't branded as Halo. Because again, this entire story focuses on mysticism, a magical item that we don't know what it does, but it does some things. And it's a conflict between humans and aliens trying to get to something that we all know is a weapon from like episode two. At this point, if they had changed it to something like Legend of the Seven Stars or some random name like that, I think it would have been better. Actually, I got an idea. Why not just call it Waypoint? Call it Waypoint. The keystone is leads you to a waypoint which helps you unlock certain technologies that could be used as weapons. You are fight the humans in a corrupt and multi planet empire is looking for this to subjugate the resistance of the people who are trying to break away from the human empire. On the same time, they're fighting a group of, al of religious zealots of aliens that are trying to also find this cache of weapons and technology so that they can quell their own, their own rebellion and also conquer the humans. Call it Waypoint. And you have a story that now you can, you're feel, you can feel free to do whatever you want. Halo never had mysticism, but if you call the show Waypoint, well, maybe Waypoint does have mysticism. Maybe that's something that works a lot better. Maybe that's more interesting. The problem is, by calling it Halo, you are now saying this is an alternate reality to the franchise you know. However, the movies, the books, the previous animations and TV shows have never established mysticism to this degree, and I think that's the biggest detriment to this. You had established characters, you had established lore, established rules, and established outlooks on life, and instead of doing any of that, you decided to not pay attention to the source material and throw it out. This could have been good. Because again, if this show was not called Halo, a lot of people would be a lot more forgiving for the writing flaws it has. Because, oh, it's a new group of people trying to make a new IP. Making a new IP is debatably more difficult than continuing with a normal IP. That's already well established. However, as we've seen, a lot of people nowadays who are writers don't care about the source material. And with Halo, it's obvious. There's so much that you could have done with Halo that it... For some examples, one that I would have been interested in is if the entire series for this Halo TV series was dedicated to a group of ODSTs, like a band of brothers type story, there's so much you could do with that. If we focused on a group, a squad of ODSTs, where a character will sometimes die and get swapped out, you now have a group focused on fighting, focused on moving from point A to point B, so it's easy, they're fighting, like a pointless Michael Bay action, you just need to have the characters have good chemistry, and, as soldiers do, some of them will die. So when one or two die, you have to swap them in, and then you get new drama with having the new guy join the squad. They work as best they can, but sometimes they don't always get along perfectly. That would be an interesting series, because then you could do what the ODST episode does from the Halo Legends series, where they sometimes have a Spartan accompany them, or they get saved by a Spartan. This not only can show that although normal humans are able to kind of fight, even though we're losing the war, a Spartan can be so much more of a mystical and mythical image, because the few times we see a Spartan, they kick major ass and save the regular humans. Again, ODSTs are basically just jump shock troopers. They get shot out of drop pods, and they do anything between assassinations, covert ops, sabotage, they do it all. 
but they are elite soldiers. Having elite soldiers that we establish be really good and the best of humanity get their asses kicked and all of a sudden be saved by a single Spartan when a squad of like five or six of them couldn't do the job, that would be so much more interesting, but it would preserve how the Spartans were mythical in how they were perceived on the battlefield. They were the weapons and the saviors of humanity, and their combat prowess was unmatched. That would work so much better, and I think that would keep everything interesting for people, because then you have what we perceive as normal humans looking at what seem to be demigods, whereas lore nerds, in this case for the show, would know that Spartans were just genetically altered humans. And I think, again, that would be so interesting to see. And with the budget they had for the show, they could have easily done that. It's kind of disappointing. <sighs> However, there is, another, there is another idea for a show that somebody brought up that I thought could have been interesting, which is just show the outright abduction and indoctrination of the kids. Like, I think it's the book Halo, The Fall of Reach that goes into the backstory of how the kids were trained and John's upbringing. So that from the age of 6 to the age of 14 for their first mission, you get to see a little bit of their boot camp training. And then from 14 and onward, you get to see their actual special forces missions. And then you get to the part of where the Covenant join in, first contact. But again, you get to establish how the Spartans were the best of the best by showing their training, the upbringing, and how they came to be. That would be not only easy in terms of what they need for special effects, weaponry, and set designs. But you wouldn't need to do much more. It would just be a Band of Brothers character dynamic between all the trainees and cadets. So you would have John. So for normal lore, you could throw out names like John, Fred, Linda, and Kelly from some of the original Spartans that are in Blue Team. And all of a sudden, not only would people see that, they would be interested. But then you can introduce some other Spartans, because I'm not even certain they listed all of the Spartans that lived through all the experiments. But that's just the Spartan 2s. Because then you can also start bringing up the Spartan 3s. Not long after the Spartan 2s are already showing they're successful and doing well, then we can have the Spartan 3 program also get introduced and show the animosity between them. Again. It would be interesting, and I think that would work out pretty well. This show decided to focus on, instead of military shooter, or adapt any of the books, they decided, we know what's best, we're going to make a waypoint keystone that has extra magical powers that we don't know how it works. We're going to have a corrupt human government beat down an insurrection, and we're going to have a race of aliens also try to find the reason behind the artifact that the humans now have. There's so much more that could have been done, but it's the fact that they retcon how the Covenant work and how the Halo TV series has worked since the beginning, that it feels disingenuous at times. Like, for example, the Covenant would kill humans because whenever they had their little, in the show, the little stick that would show forerunner technology, well, the prophets were the ones who were only able to interact with them in the Covenant. Their claim to a theocracy was, hey, we can control and use these technologies and this artifact, so we will be the prophets and lead you to this greater knowledge. Having humans being able to interact with it not only invalidates the prophet's religion and claim to power, but it invalidates everything else within the covenant lore. And so because of that, they would kill all humans, naming them blasphemers in the name of the true faith or whatever. Basically, they went on a crusade. And so, because of that, again, having a human lead the prophets, when you know the lore behind it, it's the fact that it doesn't follow what was established in both the books and the games, and the original animated series, that I just can't help but feel bad for all this. There's so much you could have done. And instead, we decided that we're just going to not do any of the interesting or easy show ideas. We're just making a new show altogether. So again, I feel this show would have done so much better if it was made as a different TV series altogether. And that it would be easier if we'd done this. But, you know what? 
Here's something I also have a question about. Why does Hollywood decide when it comes to video games to normally adapt to the most story-driven video games? Like with Lara Croft, that was all about the character and what she was doing. That movie was okay. I watched it when I was a kid, so I wasn't exactly the smartest on the block, but I had fun watching it. It didn't make sense half the time, but it was fun to watch. But with this Halo TV series, Halo is such a well-defined and fleshed out universe that it's kind of difficult to take anybody seriously if they're making a show or TV series about Halo and not respect the source material, similar to Star Wars. Because you have Star Wars fan films on YouTube that are fantastic, but then Episode Nine, The Rise of Skywalker, basically said, screw you, Episode 4, 5, and 6 is pointless now, because they brought Palpatine back as the main villain. And again, there's so... Gosh, I could go on a rant about The Rise of Skywalker, but let's not. It's the fact that there are so many games that have very down-to-earth or very well-established universes and lore that I don't understand why Hollywood's going for these. I honestly, honestly, the best game series I can think of they could adapt for Hollywood would be Monster Hunter. Monster Hunter has hardly any story in it. And I say this as a fan of Monster Hunter. I love... I love the few games I have played in the series, but the story is not exactly the most in-depth. But again, you get a couple people with a gun lance, an insect glaive, a charge blade, and a hunting horn. You got four people with some out-of-control, very odd but unique weapons, all hunting monsters. That would be such an easy show to make. Like, seriously, just give Michael Bay the rights to make a Monster Hunter movie, I guarantee that you would have a success in the theater, because Monster Hunter isn't about the story, it's about hunting monsters and the gameplay. And Michael Bay is not known for his in-depth stories and characters, he's known for his over-the-top action scenes, and I think that would be fantastic, especially if you have a gun lance, so you can get all the explosions in when you need to. But Hollywood's looking at, I guess, whatever IP is the most well-known that they can potentially make an easy buck off of. And that's kind of how this is working out. Now, if you're looking at me and thinking, hey, you're being an idiot, why are you supporting this if you hate it? Technically, I sail the seven seas because I don't have money to actually waste on this. I'm too busy paying rent and bills that I don't have enough time to... I don't have enough expendable income to have streaming services, at least in my opinion I don't. So because of that, I look at all of this and I just think, you know what, nah. So I sail the seven seas. If Halo Season 2 actually gets greenlit, I'm going to be surprised. But we'll see how that dumpster fire goes. And I'm still nervous about the Lord of the Rings series, but we'll get to that when we get to that. Anyway, I've been a degenerate. This is my opinion. Nobody cares. And I hope you all stay safe out there in the meantime.